about a year ago, I made a video about Wayfinder dolls, little compasses used by ancient inhabitants of Alush, with maps marked on their bodies. Today I want to talk about the people who made them, so I'm gonna do the typical archaeologist thing and call them the Wayfinder people, after their most distinctive physical trace. There were a few thousand Wayfinder people at the most. They hunted, fished and foraged for food, moving around the river basin throughout the year. They didn't farm, but they did scatter seeds at the mouth of the river when it flooded, and came back for the plants later. They made tools out of stone, and were very good at carving. They didn't know what metal was, or how to use it, but they did have some understanding of natural magnetism, because there are some types of rock around here which can naturally become magnetised through lightning strikes. Even in real life, lightning strikes can cause magnetic anomalies that last for thousands of years. The Wayfinder people believed that spirits travelled north when they died, but they could get trapped in rocks on their journey. That's why magnetic rocks always turn to face north when suspended from string, or turn to face other spirits if one was close enough. And since lightning could affect magnetism, lightning must be the process of souls getting trapped. When they found magnetically charged rock, they'd often carve it into statues, or make compasses shaped like small people, the Wayfinder dolls. They lived in the Yelush Basin for a good few thousand years, until something happened that forced them to flee. And this is how they'd tell that story, a few generations later. They were down south, at the mouth of the river. It was a cloudy night. Suddenly it became as bright as day, and the sky was torn apart, from south to north, revealing the whiteness beyond. It was bright enough to blind people, like looking too long at the sun. Then the thunder came, louder than any real thunder, and the ground shook. The noise came from the north, so they decided to go and see what had happened. For days they didn't see anything that had changed, but then they noticed the Wayfinder dolls acting strange. They stopped pointing north and instead spun around, confused, or pointed other directions. People followed where the dolls pointed, and that was when they found the hungry stones. Three rocks, as big as houses, as black as night, and cold even though it was summer. All around them, the grass was gone. They sucked in all the light and heat around them, and reflected nothing back. They were heavier than any other rock, dense with spirits they'd swallowed. The spirits inside the Wayfinder dolls would pull towards them too, and were only saved by the strings they were worn on. When people went close to the stones, they felt their bodies go cold, and their hearts beat fast. And so the Wayfinder people, the sensible ones at least, decided they had to go north. These stones had come from the south, and were clearly evil. Going north would get them closer to the spirit world, and keep them safe. But for some people it was too late. They had touched the hungry stones, and their spirits had been stolen. They'd gone strange and cold and obsessed with the stones. Going north meant getting away from these people too. More than half of the Wayfinder people went on the great journey north. For a long time, their Wayfinder dolls kept pointing south, back towards the Hungry Stones. They travelled without stopping for three months, or three years, or thirty years, depending on who's telling the story. They only knew they were safe when the dolls started to point north again, so that was where they settled. 